Looking up at the night sky, we are amazed by how it seems to go on forever. But what will the sky look like billions of years from now? A particular type of scientist, called a cosmologist, spends her time thinking about that very question. The end of the universe is intimately linked to what the universe contains. Over 100 years ago, Einstein developed the theory of general relativity, formed of equations that help us understand the relationship between what a universe is made of and its shape. It turns out that the universe could be curved like a ball or sphere. We call this positively curved or closed. Or it could be shaped like a saddle. We call this negatively curved or open. Or it could be flat. And that shape determines how the universe will live and die. We now know that the universe is very close to flat. However, the components of the universe can still affect its eventual fate. We can predict how the universe will change with time if we measure the amounts or energy densities of the various components in the universe today. So what is the universe made of? So as a cosmologist, I am really interested in exactly these questions. It is our quest to understand the universe and what it contains. So what do we do if we want to understand the universe? Well, you need a combination of theory and data. And that's really important because we live in a universe that is giving us information and we need to use that to really answer these fundamental questions. One of the types of data that we use are what we call standard candles. Now, this is basically that we have a type of star that we know explodes with a certain type of brightness. So we know intrinsically how bright that star is when it explodes. What we do is we measure how bright it appears to us, and that gives us some information of how far away the star is. Just like you do when you cross the road at night, you look at how bright the headlights are and you can tell how far away the car is. So this gives us a lot of amazing information about distances in the universe. And these distances change depending on what the universe is made of. If you were uh, looking at uh, this, this uh, image, you can see there's a beautiful galaxy with a lot of dust. But what we really care about is the very bright star at the bottom. Typically when these stars explode, they're so bright that they outshine the galaxy that, ho uh, that hosts them. Now, in the news last week and this week, you will have seen that we recently discovered one of these bright supernovae, as we call them, in a galaxy really close to home. This is an M81, and you can see by comparing the left and right image that there's suddenly a very bright spot that wasn't there before. I encourage you, if you can, come to New Jersey where, where the skies are really clear, but even in New York City, if you look outside, you should see in the next couple of weeks that this is quite bright. Um, and so it's a star exploding that you can see with your, eye, with your own eyes. And this star um, exploded millions of years ago. What we do is we use these stars to tell us about the geometry of the universe, to tell us about distances. And when these stars were first used in the late 90s, we found something really extraordinary. It appeared that these stars were further away than we expected them to be, just based on Einstein's theory of relativity. It's kind of like if I threw a ball up in the air, anyone could tell me what would happen. It would just come down to Earth. But now imagine if you all walked in this room, I threw a ball up in the air, and instead of just coming back down to Earth, it floated away. You would straight away think that there was something weird in this room. And that's exactly what scientists felt in the late 90s when they discovered this the fact that these distances were much further than they expected. So what they said is they there was something acting against gravity, something that is making these distances larger. And we, because we didn't know what this was called, we called it dark energy. In fact, this was such a revolutionary discovery with data, and it had been predicted by theory, that the 2011 Nobel Prize was awarded for the discovery of the expansion, uh, the accelerating expansion of the universe. And these are the gentlemen that recently won the Nobel Prize. So what does it mean if the universe is accelerating? These distances are getting further and further apart, and the universe is getting much bigger as it ages. In order to do that, we know that there must be a large fraction of the universe that is made up of this dark energy. We also know there's a certain part of the universe made up of something else we call dark matter, which acts like normal matter, but we can't see it. So that leads us to realize that less than 5% of the whole universe is made up of things that we actively understand. Think about that. 
We think we know a lot about places in the, in the world and about stars and about gas, but we know very little about the universe. We really are discovering the unknown. In, put in a pie chart, you can see this tiny little sliver in the orange and silver are really what we know, and the rest we are discovering and trying to understand. So what can we do to, do, to understand the content more, uh, in more detail? Well, one of the things that we can do is we can map radiation on the sky. And one of the things that I work on is me measuring radiation that's been coming to us since the Big Bang. We call it the cosmic microwave background radiation. It's a mouthful, and it's so exciting. So if we imagine in this artist's impression, projecting, this is our Milky Way, and we're sitting inside it in the solar system. And now we look into the sky, and we imagine that there's a sphere on the sky, and we unwrap that, so we should see an ellipse. We can look at that ellipse, and we can measure all the radiation on the sky, and we can see how it changes with frequency, because we know that there's radiation of many different types of frequencies, like ultraviolet, radio, etc. So as we change the frequency, we see that the universe looks incredibly different, which is really great. And we can also map it to a very fine resolution, so you start to see tiny changes in the energy of this radiation on the sky. These tiny changes, especially at long wavelengths that I'm interested in, tell us about what the universe was like right in its very first moments. And it tells us how those, those densities turned into the galaxies we see today. Given that we think this radiation was there, what of course we do as scientists is we go and look for it. And this is the experiment that I work on, the Atacama Cosmology Telescope, which is in the deserts of northern Chile. And it measures this radiation um, that's coming to us since the beginning of the universe and tells us incredible things about where we are and how the light has come towards us and how we've come on this journey. Here are some photos of scientists building and understanding the experiment and the telescope. And you can see that there are many different things you can do as a scientist. You can work as a theorist trying to puzzle things out. You can actually build things and see that they work, especially if this is the, this is the good scientist sign for things are working. It's incredible that we live in a universe where we have so much information that we can really understand it. And we can start asking questions today that we might not even have imagined 50 years ago. It's a very exciting time, um, and it's giving us surprising results, more questions, and hopefully more answers. Thank you. <laughs>